Okay, so we know this is sharp, um, but the next step before we start measuring the actual gap is we want to make sure that there is a discontinuity in the running variable around that cut point, um, which we were able to see um, here. Like we can see that there's a running variable, like there's definitely a discontinuity there. But what we want to make sure is that nobody is manipulating um, access to um, the entrance exam. We don't want to see a ton of people here scoring 69 right at the cutoff. Um, if we saw a giant clump of people at 69, that could indicate um, that lots of people that are here in this range, like that would score 71, 72, 73, are purposely missing questions so that they can get into the, the tutoring group. And we don't want to see that. We want to, because essentially we want these two groups to be as if they were random. Um, so what we need to do is see if there really is a discontinuity at that cut point or if there's not. Ideally, we don't want there to be. Um, so to do this, we can do it a couple different ways. Um, the easiest way is probably to do a histogram of our running variable of the entrance exam here. So we want to see if like what the distribution of the entrance exam looks like and kind of like that marathon plot that we saw um, in the lecture, we don't want there to be a peak right next to the cutoff um, because that again, um, indicates there might be some manipulation. So we're going to insert a new chunk here, and we're going to make a histogram. So we're going to say ggplot, our data is the tutoring data set. Um, our aesthetic mapping, on the x-axis, we're going to put our running variable, which is entrance exam. And we're going to fill each of these bars by um, whether or not they use tutoring here. So we're going to say fill equals tutoring. And then we're going to say geom histogram. So if you notice, I did not specify a Y aesthetic. That's because geom histogram will calculate the Y. The Y in this case is the count. Um, so histograms take that entrance exam um, variable and put it into buckets um, and then count how many observations are in each of the buckets is what we're gonna see. So if I click on play now, we should see a basic histogram. Um, it gives us a warning here. It's using 30 bins, and so that's it. there are 30 buckets all the way across here. Um, but it's saying that we need to specify our own because that's best practice. So we can go ahead and do that. I can say bin width equals, let's try five. That's probably too wide. Um, it, does, it doesn't look like there's a huge discontinuity there. Like that looks pretty smooth. That's good. Um, we can probably shrink this down to like two so that these bins are a little bit smoother. Cool. Um, we do have this issue here where right here on the cutoff, um, we have like this stacked bar. And that's because um, each of these, these buckets are not, they're centered here at 40. So like this, this bar right here at 40, it doesn't show like between 40 and 42. It's showing between 49 and 51. And so right here, our 70 bucket is not showing 70 and 72 it's crossing that threshold. And so we get this overlapping fill bar right here. So we don't want that. Um, so there's this argument called boundary that tells um, boundary equals, and then this will tell it how to start the bars. Um, so we can tell it just any whole number, we can say boundary equals 70. And so it'll start a bar at 70 instead of at 69 to 71. So if we plot it now, that should get rid of the overlapping bars there, that's good. Um, one thing I like to do with histograms is I like to add a thin white border. Um, so I say color equals white. That way you can see kind of the bars easier. That looks nice. And then the last thing we want to do is add a vertical line at our cutoff, because that's what we care about. We want to see if there's any weird jump in the distribution at the cutoff. So to do that, we'll say geom v line x intercept equals 70 because that was our cutoff so if we run it now there's our line at 70 and so just judging by this graphically here what we don't want to see is a ton of people here and then a drop um, on the other side of the cutoff we want it to look fairly smooth as you go across this x variable here or the entrance exam and this looks like it's pretty good like there's not a huge unexpected number of people 
between 68 and 70 compared to people at 70 and 72. So I'd say that that's probably pretty good. Um, we can test this more officially using what is called a McCrary density test. We talked about this in the lecture. Um, this is essentially the same idea, but has more math behind it. So instead of doing just a normal histogram and guessing, um, we can actually draw a density plot to see if the confidence intervals overlap. And there's a number that we can look at um, to determine if there's a statistically significant difference at the cutoff there. So to do that, we use the function called rd plot density um, to do this. The syntax for this is weird. Um, the only way you can figure this out is by looking at the documentation for it. So if you put your cursor inside a function and press F1, it will open the help page for that, or you can go to the help panel and search for rd plot density. Um, so really, like, there's a ton of arguments in here. You can see all sorts of arguments. If you scroll down to the bottom, there are examples um, of how to do this. Um, and so basically the only way I know how to do this is because of these examples. Um, so what we do to check or to plot the, the McCrary test here is we have to feed it a couple arguments. We have to feed it an argument called RDD because we do. And what we have to feed it there is a function called rd density, right there. And here we feed it the running variable. So that would be our tutoring dollar sign entrance exam. This dollar sign is R's way of saying, like, take the tutoring column or tutoring data set. The dollar sign means look at the columns inside it, and we want the entrance exam column inside the tutoring data set. So that's, that's what that syntax looks like. Um, the reason we have to do this is because all of these regression discontinuity packages don't work well with dplyr and with the pipes and um, the other things that we've been doing in this class. Um, so we have to kind of do this dollar sign thing instead, which stinks, but that's what you have to do. Um, so we want the running variable, and then we tell it the cutoff, which is this C. So we say C equals 70. That's our cutoff. Then we feed it another argument called capital X, because we do, because the documentation says to. Um, and this is also the running variable, which seems kind of repetitive, but that's just how the function works. So we say tutoring, dollar sign, entrance exam. And then the last argument we can feed it is just kind of convenient. We can say type equals both. What this means is it'll plot lines and also points. Um, if you look at the documentation for type, it actually tells you what it does. Let's look at it. There's a long thing. If you click here, we can search for type. And there it is. So we can say type equals line, or type equals points, or type equals both. And it will plot stuff. So if we do type equals both, it'll do lines and points. So now if I run this, it should show a plot that looks like this. Cool. So this is our histogram that we saw earlier, basically this here. Um, but we also have this density plot here. Um, and we can see if there's a gap right here at our cutoff at 70. Um, and it doesn't look like there is. There's a tiny gap, but it's within the confidence intervals on both sides. And so we're probably safe. Um, if you click on this, this shows just a whole bunch of information um, about how it calculated that. And so that is basically our finding here, that there's not a huge difference. We're probably safe. There's probably not much manipulation going on. Um, so we can proceed.